Okay. Welcome to the Global Watch International Call. It is May 22nd, 2023, Jerusalem time. This hour is the journey, which is our weekly discipleship hour. This hour, we are going to talk about the spirit of Elijah Watchman Summons with my very own wife, Susan Rao, leading the teaching and discussion. And uh, so let me pray a blessing over you, my dear. I'll take Father, it. <laughs> we good. We just thank you for Susan and uh, the amazing woman of God that she is, um, who's always going at a hundred percent capacity, and uh, and we just say thank you, Lord, that um, your favor surrounds her as with a shield. Thank you for just wisdom that um, you give her every day, spirit of wisdom and revelation that she might know you better. We just pray for renewed strength. We pray on this hour for just great um, clarity of focus, but also great joy as she's revealing, as she's showing to the rest of us what it is that you're revealing to her during this hour. And we just declare over Susan, over my wonderful wife, that no weapon formed against you will prosper, my dear, and um, any plans of the enemy over you will come to nothing. And uh, may the joy of the Lord be your strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, welcome, everyone. Uh, it's great to see your smiling faces. I hope they stay smiling throughout all of this. I hope that we can have some joy as we go through this. It's good to see some of you who are on the, the land team in Israel with us, and also those of you who are on the home teams. And I'm telling you, we needed your prayers, and they were greatly, greatly answered. Um, I'm still in recovery mode from that, trying to ponder all that God did. I don't think we'll ever apprehend it, but um, <clears throat> trying to discern the times and the seasons for the watch as we go forward. And really, we're launching tonight a whole series on the spirit of Elijah and the watchman's summons. And... Um, I'll explain it first in a minute, in, in a minute, but I thought it would be best to show this little video clip. We're all familiar with it. It's one of our favorite movies. We watched it. I don't know how many times with our kids growing up. It's from the Lord of the Rings and it's about uh, lighting the rampart. And um, this video clip is worth a thousand words, but it sets the stage for the conversation tonight. So Shirley, can you show that? Well, that is um, quite uh, quite the <laughs> introduction to this tonight, and I hope it stirs you all up and gets your heart a, a little bit aflame, um, because the spirit of Elijah is moving to set our hearts uh, aflame again. Why? Because um, starting with Easter and Passover, even at the beginning of the year, we have been through so many convergences, and it's unusual, and it's not it's not like this every year. We had the Easter and Passover converge this year, the Night of Power and Yom HaShoah converged this year, Rosh Kodesh and Shabbat converged this year, and the end of Ramadan and the start of, um, start of the summit that we just recently held in um, Kehilat HaKamel that was on the very day that Ramadan ended. So um, what does that define? It defines a set time, a moed time when God de decides to do this thing in the land. And so, uh, and then not only that, by the time uh, we got back from Israel, um, then this Isaiah 62 call came out through IHOPKC and they're calling a hundred million intercessors to pray for Israel at this time. Uh, apparently there's an alert in the spirit particularly towards what's happening in Israel. In fact, we left on um, early morning, May 2nd, uh, just before the first bombs started to go off in Israel for the latest war. And so it was, it's like there, the reality of the intensity of the times and the birth pangs are increasing. Yes, there'll be times where we rest back, but there'll be times where we need to in, um, increase. But the purpose of this 
spirit of Elijah, you can go to the slides there. I've got a few slides to help accentuate what I'm going to say, and hopefully you have some time for prayer and conversation afterwards. Um, the Which one are you on here? Let's see. Yeah. So I, I just really briefly stated why we're calling this a watchman summons, that the spirit has escalated. I think it's beyond a call, and it really is a summons um, to everyone on this call. All of you are alert, but there are many on the sidelines that are coming in and going out, coming in and going out. Maybe they'll, they'll do it when, when they can, when their, their time allows. That's, that's fine, and I, there's no pressure. This is, uh, but this is a heralding call that the time of the watchman has come, and I hope there's more clarity by the end of this. So, <clears throat> what are the goals? You can go to the second slide. <clears throat> Our goals for this series is how the spirit of Elijah and Isaiah 62, the watchman, relate to one another in the present times. And um, also, secondly, to recognize that we are in a set time. We are in a Moed time, a time that is set by the Lord, and, and that this is a call to, call to arms for all of us, so to speak. And so we want to call all the watchmen to, watchmen to their posts and equip them. There are, like I said, people on the sidelines that haven't quite found their place or know their place maybe haven't been equipped for their place. And we want to, this should be a very good on-ramp to help people climb up to the wall and build and take their post. And um, uh, one of the things that the people through I, the IHOP community have expressed is they want, to, uh, want intercessors to be marked um, for this time and this hour to continue to press in towards uh, the uh, destiny and call of Israel in this hour. So one of the things I want to note that is in Isaiah 62, uh, it says, I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They will not keep silent day or night. But who sets watchmen into place? It's not Fred and I. It's not the global watch. It's God. And I've said this from uh, time and time again to the Global Watch that this is, an, if you're looking at the personalities of Susan and Fred, you're looking for the wrong thing. What you really should be looking at is to God. God, what is your response to the hour and the times that we are in? So it is God that sets the watchman on the walls. And I'm going to tell you that I feel um, presently more of a surge than I've ever felt um, really since 9-11, 2001. And at that point, I was really on the backside of the desert <laughs> and a lone voice crying in the wilderness. But now, now people have responded to this call. And I believe that, that we are in a supernatural time of really escalating our, our, our stance before the Lord, asking him how he's calling us to build and to maintain the watch at this hour and to build the so-called walls of prayer across the nations. They should really should, should be walls, the walls that you can walk on like the watchman walked on the city walls. That's the kind of walls I'm talking about. Not walls that keep people separated. That's, that's not the walls. It's the walls that you walk on, the walls that you can run on and to connect with other people on. <clears throat> So it's God that sets the, um, the Isaiah 62 watchman in place. And so um, this is a very important call for the hour that we are in. And the wall, call to the watch, as Fred and I have walked through this journey, you can look at the um, prophetic history of the watch. And I like to repeat it because it encourages me to look back on how God has answered us, how God has accentuated the times when we needed to take key steps. He's been there to confirm the hour and the time that we are in. Well, just most recently, April 16th, when people uh, in our team were landing in Israel, um, guess what hit Israel? <laughs> A meteorite. 
and it sent a sonic boom throughout Israel on up to uh, what, guess what, Mount Carmel, where we were going to meet. So it is just, um, you can, it, it, do you have, you can show this slide with the, the third slide with the meteorite picture. Yeah, I, I need to let you know. Um, but that's the meteorite on 16th of April. This isn't something we can make up, folks. This is God confirming the sign, the spirit of Elijah is coming to restore all things, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the children to the fathers. And his eye is on Israel. <clears throat> so uh, that's uh, my point here. It's God, it's God. And I pray that you and all, everybody on this line can um, take that to heart and uh, to the prayer room on how God wants you to help build the walls across the nations as we prepare for his return. Um, and let me just clarify that. Uh, well, I'll clarify it in just a minute. A minute. It, we'll talk about the God's timing and, and uh, yeah. So let's move on beyond the meteor, right? On to slide four. Mm. And, um, one of the things that distinguishing marks, I believe, of a watchman is that they um, can appear out of nowhere. In fact, you know, um, when God made man, he said, now tend and keep my garden. Well, that word keep, we'll talk about that in a minute. Shamar is the word watch. So um, the basic call of mankind is to be watchmen. The question is, are we doing it? And that's a question only each one of us can ask. But though at a very different time, Elijah appeared on the scene in Israel at an extraordinary time of need, King Omri, his um, <clears throat> grandfather, had ruled, uh, not Elijah's grandfather, I'm sorry, Ahab's uh, father. Um, Omri had ruled over Israel and Samaria for 12 years. And in 1 Kings 16, 25, it says, he did worse than all who were before him. Omri uh, had a son called Ahab. And um, 1 Kings 16, 33 says, he did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel who were before him. In fact, there were like three three decades and more of kings that had been doing horrible things to rule the people. And um, his and Ahab's wife, Jezebel, was in the process of killing all the prophets around her. So this was a very, very dark time in, Israel, in Israel's history. But who appears out of nowhere? Elijah. Watchmen can come out of nowhere. And that's what he's God's called each one of us to be a watchman. It doesn't mean that we have to be somebody special in the kingdom or whatever, but we are all meant to be watchmen. The question is, is that what we are really doing? So watchmen in biblically, not only are we called to be watchmen, but biblically throughout biblical history, watchmen were called on the scene when? when God chose to ch uh, change the course of the nation. In the uprising of Absalom in 2 Samuel 18, watchmen were by David at the gate. At the overthrow of Jezebel in seven Kings, uh, at 2 Kings 9, 17 to 20. Watchmen were there with, with the, uh, with, uh, at, the, at the site of Jezebel. Ezekiel was a watchman He's created to be watchman. He spoke about and defined a watchman. In Luke 2.8, um, uh, Jesus said that he's, he was, uh, um, Elijah will come first to restore all things. In 2 Kings 11 and 2, 2 Chronicles 21 is one of the most historic, I believe, times in Israel's history when all of David's seed were about to be extinguished, except for the priests uh, took baby Joash, hid him, 
and um, set up the watch. And within six years, they were able to bring the true King Joash forward and the horrible rule of Athaliah came to an end. The, the entire history of, of Israel was overturned. Why? Uh, because God, Here's what I found. God set a watchman on the walls and they, they did their work to rearrange the government and bring it back into proper order. So Sue, these are- Sue, let, me, let, me just, let me just punctuate that. that. Uh -huh. Basically, what you're trying to alert our attention to is that when God is about to change things, he summons the watchman. Exactly. That's it. And I think we're in a time, we're in a set convergence of all these spiritual things. And I'm praying that all of us tonight get the light in our hearts to realize, you know what? God is choosing, he's raising up watchmen in this hour for a reason. Why? Because I believe he is about to change the course of nations. And he's right now, I could say, what time is it? And I would say, it's time for divine intervention because everywhere you look, it's, we need God's hand to turn this thing around. And so we're not to give up and wait to, and get lazily go down the river and wait for God to do something. No, this is a call to arms and a call to a higher level of commitment because when we seek him, guess what? We're going to find him. So um, I would like to look at the three biblical foundations of the watchman and how it relates to Elijah. So let's go to slide five. And I'll just quickly go through these to show you that Elijah really was a watchman. And um, then we'll go on to the characteristics of the watchman. And I hope we'll come out on the other end realizing, you know what, this is a really vital call and it's very powerful call. Um, first of all, Elijah, the individual call of the, light, uh, of the watchman is very important. And Elijah heard from the Lord. That's how he was introduced. He came out of Norway, and on 1 Kings 17, he appears on the scene, talking to who? King Ahab. Well, his reputation must have gone before him because somebody just doesn't go up to a king from nowhere. But there was, there was a reputation that Elijah had been building, and then things came to a crisis, a set time, where he had to go to the king and tell him that there's going to be a drought. So, and what did he do? He heard from the Lord. This is repeated throughout the biblical narrative of Elijah. First Kings 17, 1 and 2, verse 8, verse 22. First Kings 18, 1, 19, 11, 21, 17. Uh, that's repeated. Elijah heard from the Lord. Elijah heard from the Lord. Elijah heard from the Lord. Why? Because he had an individual relationship with the Lord. So he was really an Ezekiel 317 watchman, where a watchman hears from the Lord, and then he acts. There was also a corporate call for Elijah. He understood community, and um, <clears throat> though he was a strong prophet, he embraced and mentored Elisha. He was engaged with the intergenerational um, uh, impartations. Um, he was also engaged with the schools of the prophets at Bethel, Jericho, and Gilgal. Just look at 2 Kings, uh, second chapter, the first four verses. All speak of uh, Elijah working with uh, the prophets in Bethel, Jericho, and Gilgal. And I really believe that the um, part of the new prophetic movement right now is uh, moving into the corporate anointing where there will be communities, schools of the prophets uh, working. And we are seeing that come alive in the Global Watch. In fact, we are trying to, to find uh, the areas where the watchmen are in the various nations and communicating and connecting them, um, <clears throat> uh, um, connecting them effectually so that we can like those ramparts in that video, we can hear, we can see the call and respond. Um, 
the book of Nehemiah is also another uh, another book that we uh, structure the global watch out of. And this is for those of you who are a little bit newer on the block, but Nehemiah really describes how we are constructing the watch. Nehemiah called the families to their places on the wall and the families built their, their various portions. In other words, this prayer ministry works in this way. They can build that portion of the wall. Another prayer ministry or a church builds this way. They can be a part of the wall. They can, the church can be a part of the wall when their prayer ministry or a network can be another part of the wall. It really is a, formed a, a safe platform uh, upon which watchmen can gather, hear from the Lord, and go back to their families and begin to uh, work uh, the call of God and the circumstances that we find ourselves in. So we are really building up a communication system and a relational system, not just communication, but a relational system that can effectually communicate with one another. <clears throat> Fred, did you want to say anything about that? Well, just that, you know, part it's, it's relationships are absolutely essential. Close relationships, trusting relationships are actually absolutely essential for the um, effectiveness of the watch. Mm -hmm. Because we ha have each family in the watch or each group or each nation <clears throat> has their place on the wall. But it doesn't matter if they have the place on the wall if they're not connected. That's we really right. have to connect with each other and we connect with each other through relationships. And mm -hmm. um, just to emphasize that point, um, many of you know that uh, Susan and I, after this, after the Elijah summit and journey are actually uh, in a few days, we're going back to Israel for a week and a half. Uh, we felt like the Lord was calling us back there. Why? Uh, basically to build relationships. And, uh, and, and so we're, we're trying to walk out what is a key, our key, um, key functions of the watch. Yeah, and so the community call is really important. In fact, uh, corporate prayer is, and community is, is instrumental throughout revival history. One of the most famous ones is out of Herrenhut, Germany, which means the Lord's watch. And the, the instigator, or I should say founder of that, that watch, Count von Zinzendorf, was noted as saying, as there is no Christianity without community. And we've uh, been blessed to be graced with holding international watchman summits. We've been trying to do it yearly. Of course, we went, had to stop for three years with the, the uh, COVID issue. We just came back after, I guess it was two years, hiatus last year. And we'll be holding one again August 6th through 12th of this year. And I would encourage those of you on this line to um, uh, encourage you to, if you haven't been there, to come. Because this is very important about building that community, meeting face-to-face, -face, and uh, seeking the Lord together for the coming season. Uh, this year, we're fo focusing on the persecuted church. And we will have both Iran, Iran and Israel represented there as well as we're getting some tech people involved to help it teach us all about technology safety in the hour that we're in. So that's the corporate call. So Elijah was very engaged with the individual call, the corporate call, and what about the end time call? Well, Malachi 4, 5, and 6. It, uh, uh, Malachi declares, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children's to the father, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. Well, Matthew 9, 11 says, Jesus also says, Elijah is coming first and restores all things. So yes, uh, John the Baptist was part of that Malachi 4 and 5, 6 um, uh, uh, manifest uh, fulfillment, but there is yet another spirit of Elijah coming. And I believe we're in the birthing phase of this spirit of Elijah coming to earth as it manifests itself through the watchman. Okay, so um, let's go on to slide six. We've gone through the biblical characteristics of a watchman and how Elijah applies to it. I hope you're getting this all here, the individual, the community, and the end time call. 
And what about um, the character of a watchman? I can best go through that by going through some of the common name, common Hebraic uh, words for watch or watchman. The one that is used most frequently is Shamar. And it is mentioned 464 times in the Bible. Um, and it's mentioned in Genesis 2.15, as I mentioned before, when God created man, he created us to tend and keep the garden. And um, boy, what is that? Tend and keep means to watch, shamar. And you thread that throughout the Old Testament and it's powerful. As it shows up, guess what it watches over? God's covenant, most of the, of the time. My, in my book, Remnant Rising, uh, I go through that in more in detail. I encourage you to get the book and read it because it does go through the, um, the role, biblical roles of the watchman and it does go over the, the word shamar more, uh, uh, more in depth. The Isaiah, yeah, have we heard? And now, the, now I'm wanting to get Isaiah 62 hooked in here too. So we've got Elijah um, and the prophets of Baal in 1 Kings 18, 36 and 37. This is what a Shamar watchman does. He says, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Guess what? That's a Shamar watchman speaking. He's pu pulling people back into the covenant, covenantal relationship with the Lord. Isaiah 62, six and seven, I have set watchmen. What watchmen? I have set Shamar. <laughs> watchman it's that very word in isaiah 62 that's where the spirit of elijah and isaiah 62 converge so um and again god's intended role for all mankind is for us to be shamar watchmen those who watch over his covenant okay so we go on to another word netzar is also a um, word used 62 times um, for the word watch or watchman. Um, but it's slightly different in that it, it, is, um, it is more intense and guards the precious. Um, Elijah, uh, let me just read a couple of the verses that use in Nessar. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. But let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life and peace they will add to they will add to you proverbs 3 1 and 2 proverbs 4 23 keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life now i want to just relay something to you that netzer netzer is way is is more intense more intentional than the word shamar it doesn't, they're, they're both very powerful, but Netzer is very, keep your heart with all diligence. Netzer, Elijah went from being with the king to caring for a widow. Eventually, he had enough compassion to raise her son from a dead. He was acting as a Netzer watchman. In fact, Elijah is the epitome of a Netzer watchman, preserving life and guarding it with all fidelity. How did God answer him? He took him away. He did not die. That's how intense a Netzer watchman is. So <clears throat> God in Isaiah 62, watchmen who guard and protect God's ultimate destiny, destiny of Israel to be a light to the nations. That's a Netzer watchman function, something that's very significant and important to the Lord. In fact, Netzer in Psalm 119, which is all, of, it goes through the Hebraic al alphabet. You know how many times Netzer is mentioned? 10 times, the most in any chapter of the Bible. And it's all about going back to the root meanings of, 
of Hebraic words of the letters of that alphabet. So I hope that gives you a picture of Netzer. But this is all character of a watchman. Sometimes we're Shamar, sometimes we're Netzer. Okay. <laughs> okay, slide seven. Well, two more, two more words that define a watchman. Safar. Safar. And that is uh, one of the uh, Isaiah 52, 8 um, is a Safa um, uh, watchman. Um, your watchmen shall raise up their voices. They shall sing together and they shall see eye to eye when the Lord brings back Zion. It really means to lean forward, to peer into the distance and uh, to observe, to wait. And it, it, it's always about peering into the distance. And I can tell you, everyone on this line knows what that's like because you're reading the news and you're peering into it to figure out what does this really mean spiritually. That's what we are doing. We are Safara watchmen when we're dealing with news issues, dealing with wars, rumors of war out there, things coming down the road. Uh, those are all things that characterize us looking off into the distance. Elijah was on Mount Carmel when he peers into the, into the distance. He does that seven times. He's waiting for uh, that cloud to arise. That's in 1 Kings 18, 41 to 46. Why? Because he knows the drought is coming to an end. And he finally does see that, that his servant sees that hand forming off in the distance and pretty soon the rains come. Isaiah 62, one through seven describes watchmen who are constantly peering into the distance for God's purpose to be in, dis in Israel to be fulfilled. And what is that? For Israel to be a light to the nations. That's what we're waiting for. In fact, that's in our, um, our uh, vision statement. And I'll talk about that in a little bit, in a little bit, a little bit later. But um, Isaiah 62, one through seven, Isaiah 52, eight are core critical scriptures for the watch. And it's all about looking off into the distance and being concerned, shamar for God's covenant, to come in alignment. And when we have to, we'll go into that net surf position where we need to act very, um, very clearly and very, very be hold our guard, <laughs> hold so, so to speak. And then to sum it up, there's the word mishmar that is also used as the word watch. And this is um, in Elijah 2 Kings 115, where Ahijah who was a bad king of Israel, sent uh, three different troops down up to Elijah to, uh, to um, uh, get, his, um, get his opinion on what was going to happen. And Elijah um, had basically sent fire on two of the troops and the last troop, the guy, the lead guy gets down on his knees on, before Elijah and says, please, <laughs> please come with me and talk to my, my master and tell him what you're going to tell him. And uh, so anyway, Elijah was stooding as a, on the watch. He was in, in the, uh, it says that the, the uh, troop had to go up to meet with Elijah. So he was on. He probably was on a high place, probably Mount Carmel, when all this happened. He was set at his post. That's what a mishmar is. They're set at their post. They're in their place, and it could be a watch also in the night. The, the Hebraic watch was in three watches of the night. That is also the word mishmar. Um, and Nehemiah four nine. Uh, which is also very much a part of this watch and how we're constructing us ourselves. It says, nevertheless, we made our prayer to our God and because of them, we set a watch against them day or night. That's when um, the people were starting to come against Nehemiah and the wall. So the character of a watchman is involved with all three of these things and we function in all of those four places, the uh, Shamar, the Netzar, the Safar, and the Mishmar, um, 
uh, Watchmen. I dare any of you try to repeat that. You don't have to. I'm just trying to give you an overview that Elijah, the spirit of Elijah, Isaiah 62, and the global watch and the raising up of watchmen today are all very much intertwined with God's end time plan. So I just wanted to, on the a second to let, go to the next slide. Uh, the place I really kind of got hooked into the spirit of Elijah was going to Tishbe when we went into Jordan. And um, this is a view from Tishbe. It was a high place. Guess where Elijah learned to be a watchman, to peer out over God's land. And what is this off in the distance? Um, I don't know if you can see it, but it, off in the distance is Israel. So this is where Elijah grew up. And I could imagine a little boy running over the fields and through the valleys there on over to Israel and back again, and really learning the lay of the land, what the people were like, and understood the role of the watchman. So you can go to the last slide. <clears throat> so our commission here as in the spirit of Elijah, again, is to always encourage each other to engage with the Lord intimately, to build intergenerational connections and community like Elijah and Elisha. And that's from our local communities. We don't want to be disengaged with the local and only go to the global. We want to develop the root systems from our local expressions, churches, on up to the global connections and networks. That's when it's meaningful because when we go to, uh, when we went to Israel and Jordan, we brought the report back and there will be other teams that go and hopefully they'll bring the report back. Um, <clears throat> we want to call the unknowns who are coming from nowhere. <laughs> but I'm, I'm telling you, if you're on this, if you're hearing this, you are important. And we uh, would love to connect with you and begin to help you connect with others in your area. Um, <clears throat> it's all a work in progress, but we need the call to action. The trumpet is sounding, the shofar is blowing in heaven. Why? Because I believe, um, we're being prepared for divine intervention and we want to be prepared. We don't want to be left on the sidelines and we want to continue to educate ourselves on the end time narrative. And we just launched a small group study in our uh, local church body on, on the end times. And we didn't quite know how it's going to go because there's all kinds of different eschatological theologies out of there out there, but uh, we went ahead anyway, and our house was packed, <laughs> and there was a lot of interest. So um, there's a lot of ways that if you can come back and get the foundations of what the watch is about, get fed into some of the educational things that we're going to be doing in the spirit of Elijah, um, uh, um, Watchman Summons, we will equip you to hopefully hold your ground, to build your rampart in your local community. With, with these, these things are all here to help you establish yourselves, not only here on the watch, but in your local expressions. So um, anyway, uh, the earth really now, uh, you can turn this all off. You can go out of the, yeah. Hi, everyone. It's really good to see you. I'm not looking at these slides a little bit easier to talk to people face to face. But um, we are in a convergence of time. I believe we're in a Moed time. I believe the call of the watchman is real. Spirit of Elijah, Isaiah 62, all the converging spiritual dynamics are all pointing to it. It's time to build up the ramparts, guys. It's time to get off the sidelines. And, and none of you are sideline people. I'm not pointing a finger at any one of you, believe me. But I do believe you know others that uh, need to be on board with this, that can, that can help us build, to can strengthen each other on the wall. 
Um, and I believe that there's a lot of a lot of contribution that is yet on the sideline that can feed into this. How long will the spirit of Elijah, a watchman uh, summons go? I don't know yet. <laughs> because there are so many teachers that have so much to offer us that right now we're going to build up by bringing in some of our uh, the, the tremendous insights people have out there. Next week, Kim Okamiri will, will teach us on the um, biblical, biblical um, times and seasons that we're in. I don't know if you're reading his, his things on the Global Watch signal threads, but they're very powerful. And then uh, a wonderful Shirley Momberg is going to be bringing in the character and the challenges of uh, Elijah. And we'll have Jenny will be speaking on um, the uh, Jezebel spirit and how we can handle that. Fred is going to do a session on conflict management. Um, and Deborah Boggs is going to come forward with some interesting insights she had in Jordan and Israel on the spirit of Elijah. So those are the things coming up through all of this. I'll have more detail out in the next couple of days. But um, all that being said, we'd value your prayers as we go next week into um, Israel again. Just again, we're not, uh, we're laying low to really meet with people heart to heart, face to face, and to and build that connection. It is absolutely vital that we in the nations build the walls of Jerusalem and will build the walls towards Jerusalem until it's made a praise in the earth. So um, these are the spiritual walls Isaiah 62 speaks of. We are in the midst of building them, and we need your help. A Amen. So this is, the purpose for this is that God is summoning the watchman. He's summoning us to a whole new level. And so the uh, things that are going to happen in the journey in the next few weeks are going to be basically to prepare us and equip us and uh so it's very important they will be recorded and um <clears throat> i would just urge you to to not only participate but to um ask the lord you know what what is my part in this uh, because we all have a part to play um and uh and it's going to shift things i think internationally and um we're just we're seeing the call to uh, to Israel with this fast, this 21 day fast, um, and so you know the fact that we had the the Elijah summit and journey <clears throat> a few weeks before the fast started, I think is just a sign that we're on the right track, and uh, and um, it's not just about Israel, but it is um, Israel is absolutely key in this. So everybody, thank you for your attention. Susan, we've got 11 minutes, so that's not time for much else. I'm not sure how you wanna, how you wanna do this. Yeah, we're, so Lynette, we're gonna, Lynette had something good that she wanted to share about something that just happened in testimony. So go ahead, uh, Lynette. Sorry, I couldn't help but share it with you because it was exactly one month to the time you came. Last night was the Rosh Hodesh up at Mount Carmel. Spirit of the Lord fell. The Spirit of the Lord fell so strong. We worship two hours straight. One of the kids came up to Karen and said, Can't we go on to midnight? It was nobody wanted to leave. We were just there was such a move of God in the in the time and we opened it, connecting to saying it was a historical time at, as we stood in this gate. And at the end, Justin and I were talking and I said, Justin, we didn't just open the gate to this month. We tore off the doors. And it was, <laughs> we, I just want, not because I taught on the Rosh Hodesh, but I want to encourage each one of us to ask God how to connect with this time part of God's cycles, because it was so powerful. That's what we started with on the thing, on the Elijah conference. But yesterday was an explosion in the spirit there. Doggy just left our flag lady. We had the flag of Israel in the middle and flags going around it. And 
I, I just can't explain to you the powerful thing that went on. God is truly on the move. It was generational. It was men and women, people praying, people just, and it was a combined work. And so again, it's that thing of us working together. We had a leader from um, a worship team in Tiberias. And so I just, I was like, oh, oh Fred, I have to share this <laughs> because um, I just wanted everyone to, to enter into what has been started. And God is truly on the move as we open the gates for a month in which the the church world and the nations have finally, finally turned to accept God's part in this, in, in his purposes, his kingdom purposes and Jerusalem's part. And so I just want to encourage you to link into God's timetable because, because mm-hmm. that was so powerful last night. So thanks for, for being able to jump in. Oh, wow. Lynette, I just want to jump out of this thing and hug you. I <laughs> just like, no, that's so that's so encouraging and uh and it's it's um it's really in part it's fruit from our uh, from the, the summit i believe and uh and we you know the the you all at um katie la uh you are you have a very key role i believe even in in, in israel in um in ushering in some of the things that god wants to do in the days ahead so we just bless you and we bless all the efforts that you've made and that you are making. And um, it's really amazing that you have children saying, you know, can we go longer? Can we, yeah, can we, can we. I mean, this is really, this is really <laughs> over the top. Can I, I share one more thing? Um, Ruth yeah. Webb started the day off in, in Australia and she started the Rosh Hodesh and asked if I could join her. So in Ju- I'm posted in Jerusalem during the Isaiah 62. And so I said, okay, Ruth. So I was Ruth Rosh Hodesh, Air Rosh Hodesh in Australia. We did a small one here in Jerusalem. And then I drove almost hours up to Mount Carmel, did it up there and came back so I can be on the walls here this morning in Jerusalem. So it was just I on the third month I did three Rosh Hodesh <laughs> celebrations and it's like it was it was just I mean you got to watch it and then Lincoln because just to go back to that I um Jeremiah thirty one when established covenant promised it with Israel he said as long as you see that cycle in the skies that's as long as Israel exists before me as a nation and we are taking when we join together watchmen all around the world on that time we are literally together taking back to the root of anti-semitism that because of account they said let us separate from those detestable jews for god has shown us a better way that was in the nicene uh, council amen but uh lynette you're that time frame we're taking and Lena, can you take off your uh, video? Uh, okay, yes, ever. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, that we're just taking an axe to the roots of anti-Semitism together. And this giant is falling. We are turning from all those things that have separated the church, church replacement, anti-Semitism, you name it. We are just destroying that on that day because we're saying Israel exists before God as a nation. On that day, that new covenant seal um, from Jeremiah 30. So. Amen. Amen. Okay, Lynette, we're going to, we're going to change your name to the uh, Rosh Kodesh lady. Okay. Since you're the, you're the one who is really um, uh, advocating for this. Can you put the name, the spelling of that in the, um, in the chat? Uh, We, you know, we need to, a lot of people don't really understand this and you have some great teaching on it. And um, if you can point us to that, that would be really helpful. I don't know if you have anything online, but that would be, if you have a link to something, that would be really helpful. Um, All right, great. Uh, So very quickly, we're going to go to Christine. And then Susan, we're going to go back to you if you have some last minute comments, because we don't, we have no no time left. Well, I, I think we need to pray over Israel, what's happening there, because we felt the door break open, the roof break open at the, okay. that 
so there's something happening spiritually that we must i'm calling watchmen right now we need to pray for that opening we need to yep. pray for what's continuing to happen yep and uh so let's do this let's have um uh christine you go ahead and just share briefly and then we'll have um hannah would you just pray over um israel and what's happening there right now based on what um what uh, uh lynette was just saying go ahead christine you can you mm -hmm. have to unmute. oh i don't i don't need to we can pray it's fine i just wanted to confirm because i had yesterday i came back from a um, german gathering of ywam and yeah, and I, then I was looking at this Rosh Hodesh celebration and it was giving me so much um, joy to see it. And we celebrated as a family this Rosh Hodesh to have this open heaven. It's now the third time that we did it after Lynette's teaching as a family here in Hanut. And it gave us so much um, yeah, perspective as a family to have a new month, a new uh, open gate for something. And I really can encourage you all to, to look for this celebration yesterday it was so powerful it was <laughs> i was jumping through our apartment here because because it was so life-giving and um yeah but also to yeah. remind us to pray for israel as well <laughs> yeah so yeah, let's pray yeah. amen thank you christine mm -hmm. all right hannah can you just um can you just pray over all this please yeah abba we just uh wow we, we just can't even find the words to thank you, Lord, because something happened when Lynette at the, uh, at the summit took that large silver trumpet right up on the platform and blasted it out. Something shifted and it's opening now. I caught part of that this morning, Lynette, on YouTube because Karen had posted that it was happening and I had to leave to go to my local church, but I could feel the absolute notching up of the worship and the children's involvement was off the charts. So Father, what we're saying is we're aligned. We're aligning more and more. Would you align uh, the Gentile church with your calendar. Would you get this deep into our hearts, Father? Would you open us in a way we have not been opened in the past to realize we want to catch the rhythm of your heart, but it also is your calendar, Father. Everything in the end times will happen exactly on the time frame that you have set up. This is who you are. You're a God of incredible order, Seder. This is who you are. And we adore you because you work this way. And we're just so thankful that for what we were doing in the nation, Lord, we're seeing now, as Lynette said, the door wasn't open this Rosh Hadesh. It was absolutely smashed down. I think the door is open now to never be closed again. And Father, we believe, we truly believe that Kihilat HaKarmel is a prototype in the nation. It is a template for what you want to do in Israel. We want to keep our eyes on this congregation and we want to keep our hearts wrapped around its members and its leadership. And we also, Father, want you to build within us what it truly means to be in covenant relationship with our brethren in the land. So teach us, Abba, and take us forward. Amen. Yeah, amen. Thank you so much, Hannah. That's so important. Let's, um, Susan, we're going to go back to you for some final comments, and then we're, we're going well, to need to. All, all I can say is I feel the finger of God on my heart. And I pray everyone else feels the finger of God. This is a marked time. He is marking us for this hour. It's what they've been prophesying. I pray, Father, that you take this message tonight, this, what Lynette has brought forward. We are going to try to move into that Rosh Kodesh, and uh, we're not going to try. We are going to move into that Rosh Kodesh uh, timing as well, this, the uh, swing of that to get into the fullness of God's timing. That's part of the fullness of the Gentile church, aligning with Israel. In Jesus' name, Father, give us the strategy, give us the understanding, give, give us the strength, Father. I, we need more people. Uh, some, some, Father, I, don't let us just get on this call by ourselves. I pray that, Father, commission people to call out other people, to get onto these calls so that we can grow and multiply and solidify the living stones across the nations. The hour has come. There is something coming along that's a divine intervention that we must prepare for. 
mark our hearts tonight, Father, with this commission. That is not from Fred and Sue. This is from you. And let us all take it to heart. Amen. Amen. And the joy Amen. of the Lord to be our strength. Yeah, thank you, dear. Now, do you have any announcements before we, we oh. have a call prayer? Uh, <laughs> pray for us. <laughs> put, it, put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. It's fine. No, no then, worries, David. Then uh, also, I if you have an inkling to go to Heronhut, it's time to get your registrations in and make plans uh, to come, flights and all of that. We've got more information on that. And I think it's gonna be a very important meeting. Uh, um, like I said, Iran, Hormo uh, Shariat and Danel are gonna be there, founders of Iran Alive. And Karen is bringing in a cohort of Israeli friends as well. And then um, we'll have some younger generation uh, tech people giving us some sessions on technology, uh, safety, and security. Yeah. Okay. Great job, Susan. Excellent. A plus. Um, can we have um, Allison from Australia? Would you um, please close us off in prayer? Well, Father, we, we are so grateful for who you are and what you are doing and we just bless you this day father for all that you have done for all that you are watching over and keeping in israel and lord over each one of us we thank you we praise you lord that you you do long to show us and tell us what it is that you want us to do and so we we come up higher to you father we we agree to be summoned by you, most holy God, our most high king, the king of all creation, the king of heaven and earth. So we, we just pledge our hearts afresh to you, to one another. We thank you for Fred and Sue. Lord, we thank you that you are the one that walks ahead of them, that you will lead and guide them. Lord, that you will set up every divine appointment that they'll have when they're in Israel. Lord, we thank you that Psalm 91 is theirs because they uh, abide in you, Father, and you promise to keep and watch over them in every single way. So we just thank you and we give it all to you. We praise you. Um, we thank you that you are our conquering king and from glory to glory you're taking us all lord and we we run we run to you we run to you father and we thank you in jesus name amen all god's people said amen everybody unmute yourself amen. 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 thank you everyone god bless you all Thank you, Thank you. 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 Thank you.